year of masks, social distancing, and now vaccines, we're nearly ready for post-pandemic life. But how do we get there safely? Over the next hour, we're talking to experts on the latest ways to care for our physical and mental health as we prepare for a life with COVID-19 in the rearview mirror. This is The Way Forward, navigating next steps, a virtual town hall sponsored by Primera Blue Cross. Hello and welcome to our viewers across Washington State from Snohomish over to Spokane. I'm Amatia Dreesey and today we're tackling as many issues around COVID-19 and getting life back to normal here in Washington as much as we can. We're speaking with leading doctors, therapists, researchers, mayors and more about the real long term impacts of COVID on our society. By the end, we hope you and your family and friends feel more prepared to navigate the steps ahead. Now, earlier this month, King 5 News Survey USA poll found that roughly a third of Washington state residents are ready for gatherings indoors and returning to full capacity right now for indoor dining. Now, more than a third felt more comfortable if things fully opened up in another one to five months. Almost 60% of those surveyed said that they've been vaccinated and the 40% who have not received a shot, almost half say they do not plan on getting a COVID vaccine at all. 33% say they are planning to get one and 20% are not so sure. If more than 70% of those 16 and older receive at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, the state could fully reopen even sooner than the tentative reopening date at the end of June. Well, vaccinations are currently at nearly 60%. And we're all over the map, obviously, when it comes to how comfortable we are with reopening. But I think we can all agree that we've come a long way since the coronavirus came to Washington more than a year ago. Let's check in on where we're at now with COVID-19. So right now we're in a good position. We have good vaccines that are very effective and safe. A world of difference from where we were just a year ago. We're not out of danger right now. And yes, we have to be extra careful until we have enough tests to test all our workforce and say everybody you can go back to work and to be as normal as we used to be before. While life is slowly phasing back to normal, Dr. Ali Mokdad with the University of Washington says we're not out of the woods just yet. So what we are expecting in winter to see a surge, like a previous winter, we've seen a surge in winter. But because we are vaccinating a lot of people, we're not going to see a high number of mortality. People are protected and we will not see a rise in admission to hospitals like what we have seen in the past. Good news, but not great, which is why the medical community is laser focused on those who are hesitant to get vaccinated. Dr. Vin Gupta from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation says 50% of the population is vaccinated and believes the majority of those who are not can be convinced through engagement. So 50% already there. In talking to workforces, young and old across the country, I, I think there's another 25 to 30% that are reachable, Amity. And, and yet there's probably about you know, 15 to 20% that are just not gonna get it. And in, in that group, you know, th they, have, they have questions that are answerable. A lot of those questions are, well, does this vaccine prevent me from uh, having a child? There's lots of worries in, amongst younger people on just you know, what they're hearing, what, what's being written about in the internet. So active small group engagement on these questions, vital. The false starts with the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines did not help to ease fears. Now the World Health Organization is calling vaccine hesitancy a global threat. That's a big concern for us. And it's becoming a big problem because many people are refusing the vaccine. And the numbers of people who are refusing the vaccine, the percentage is increasing and not decreasing. It's a constant battle to fight vaccine myths and misinformation online. So we have to address this. We have to ask people when you get a piece of information, don't look at who sent it to you. Look at where it originated yes. and what is behind it. And that's very important for all of us to do so. I've been empowering people to curate their own list of people that they trust on social media as, as more of a real-time um, uh, source of information that 
hopefully can be more helpful than CDC's website. And while scientists are battling rumors, new strains of COVID-19 are sneaking up on us. And also previous infections do not provide uh, as much protection against these new variants. And mainly there are three variants that we are keeping an eye on and we're losing sleep over. If there's one thing evolving faster than science, it's these viruses. So Dr. Mokdad says as we forge ahead, it's important to stay safe and even suggests hanging on to your mask. I will keep wearing my mask because I know this virus is deadly and if you let down your guard, it will come back with a vengeance. And it's that reality which has some people nervous returning to our old routines and the workplace. Well, we're going to need to be really flexible about thinking about our workspaces as we move forward. Um, and actually, you see something like two thirds of businesses are actually reconfiguring their spaces for hybrid work. So there's a lot of thinking that we're going to need to do. The big challenge is we don't know what it's going to look like. Jamie Teven is the chief scientist for Microsoft's experiences and devices. She's done a ton of research on the process of going back to work, exploring a long-term hybrid model with exceptions. So when you look at the research um, about uh, the, sort of the ideal amount of time to work mm -hmm. from home is about two and a half hours, I mean, two and a half days a week. Okay. So, so after about two and a half days a week, at home, you start losing some of the social connections that you get from face-to-face -face yeah. interaction. Um, you see job satisfaction peak for people who work remotely at about 15 hours a week. Teven's team at Microsoft has spent hundreds of hours poring over information generated from employee surveys, telemetry data, and customer panels, discovering the pros and cons of working in an office versus working from home. There's a lot of benefits to remote work in terms terms of what you're able to get done, you know? It's useful to focus, you don't have people running by your office, distracting you, um, you know, there, there's a lot that you can do. It's really good for that focused work. Um, it's less good for the sort of long, like the, 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 the new ideas, the collaboration, the spontaneous conversations that we have. You know, we've all been socially isolated for the past year and, and that's highly correlated with productivity. Um, and there's cognitive well-being, your ability to focus and really think about getting things done. And that's hard to do when you've got kids bugging you for help with homework and people come into the door with packages or whatever. While it would be nice to work at home without the distractions, experts are still worried about our level of isolation. There is no denying that the weight of this pandemic has taxed our ability to cope. Along with COVID, depression, anxiety, and fear have infected our nation. And there is no vaccine for that. Dr. Gupta says in order for us to succeed in and out of the workplace, mental health care must be paramount. Reacclimating to normal life is going to be hard for some people. It's going to be really hard. And, and, and so we need to anticipate those challenges, but providing or embedding in the workplace or providing in a virtual environment access to therapy um, and, and mental health uh, uh, services, that's gonna be, it, there has never been a time where we need this more than now. And if you find yourself needing help, it's out there. Don't hesitate to reach out. You're not alone. Whether you're in Eastern or Western Washington, we've got two crisis line numbers on your screen. Check that out. We're going to be highlighting several different helpful resources throughout the show today. Well, the pandemic has impacted so many different aspects of our lives. For many, this past year has been a wake up call on the ongoing fight for racial equity. Later in the show, we're checking in to see where we're at in that fight and what work is left to be done. And then getting back out there and socializing, fun or scary? We're gonna chat with a researcher about what to think about before going to your next big gathering. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.